My absolute favorite dish is African fish and chips, combining Caribbean and African flavors with local ingredients. It's beautiful. I'm Chef Castro Botang of House of Botang. Our guest today is Chef Castro Botang, whose West African roots influence his amazing culinary creations. Today we're preparing Moroccan spice lingcod with cassava chips, fresh tartar, and kale slaw. We're making his dish my way. I'm Garrett Shack, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. Today we're sharing the kitchen with special guest chef Castro Botang. Aquaba. Aquaba. So what does Aquaba mean anyway? Aquaba is uh, a Ghanaian word of saying welcome to my home. Perfect. Well then it fi it's fitting for this, isn't it? Absolutely it is. All right. Chef, I know you're a master at your craft, but today we're going to be preparing your dish my way. We're doing Moroccan spice lingcod with cassava chips and fresh tartar and a kale slaw. Should nice. we get started? Get started. Looking forward to this. Well, you probably thought you were going to have an easy go at it, but uh, I've actually brought a few jobs for you to do as well. So I'm going to get you to help me to keep things flowing here. Okay. Um, so fir first thing I want to kind of do is get the cassava chips going because uh, uh, what I found from using them, and it's my first time using them since uh, you and I talked about this show, um, they do take quite a bit to get nice and crispy in the deep fryer. Yes, they do. I mean, cassava in back home, what we'd normally use that is we use it more of like a boiled potato. Oh, okay. So I just thought it would be a, a nice way to, to utilize it in a more of a crunchy version. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. it kind of plays into the, the chips part of the absolutely. fish and chips that we're going to do. So uh, while I'm going to start deep frying these here, and as you can see, I sliced them on a slicer at home and I brought one for the guests to see. You can slice it uh, with a knife if you need to, but it gets... It's kind of kind of tough, hey? It is kind of tough because it's very starchy vegetable, right? You know, potatoes are a little bit lighter to be able to slice, but yeah. this takes a, a professional like yourself to, <laughs> to get going. Yeah, look at that. How's that for professional? <laughs> but uh, that being said, so if we had a, I mean, if we don't have a slicer at home, and, and we want to encourage our guests out there to to pick some of this up at the store, um, you could do it by hand. Just be very careful, obviously, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and start dropping a few of these in the deep fryer. Do you mind? I, I brought a knife over yeah. there. Uh, do you mind just slicing that up nice and thin? Perfect. Um, this is going to be our coleslaw. A coleslaw, right. okay. We're going to no add worries. some vinaigrette to it, and then we'll be able to, uh, and it'll start to mellow out. So as these go in there, so you can see Castro, of course, right? They're starting to bubble already. Yeah. Away we go. So I'll put a few in. So tell me, uh, you know, where where do you come from, Castro? What brought you uh, what brought you to Victoria and a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm originally from Ghana, West Africa. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in Ontario and um, in the last 10 years, my wife and I have been living out on the West Coast. Okay. And uh, what brought you out here? Well, believe it or not, it was that beautiful uh, hotel at the top there, the Airy. Oh. Um, we were very, very fortunate to, to come out here and, and check it out and fell in love with the area. And soon after that, we moved there, and I was the sh I was the chef for the last two years of the place. Oh right, okay, yeah. So that's so you came out here chasing work. Yeah, as we always do, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know what? That's the lucky thing about the job that we do, though. Like we can basically do it anywhere, can't we? People have to eat, so we always have a job as long as we're willing to work hard. That's exactly it, and hard work we do. Uh, all right. While you finish that up, I'm just going to tear up some of this kale here. So our coleslaw is going to have uh, red cabbage, some fresh kale. We're going to julienne or slice up nicely. Look at the knife skills on this guy. He's making me look bad. <laughs> hey, this is my show, Castro. Come on. <laughs> no, it looks awesome, bud. Thank you. A few different types of kale here. As we know, kale is super tasty and good for you, they say, right? Yeah. So I'll just slice this up neatly. Dueling knives. So um, since you moved out here, you've taken an interest in, uh, in foraging as well. You know, when I, when I first got here, uh, I met these young boys uh, or young men that was living here and they taught me all about, about eating outside and, you know, before that, as a chef, all I used to do is pick up the phone and, and dial and call, call my suppliers where these, these young men taught me how to go outside and forage for food and, and, and find interesting things that I've never ever worked with before. So I've been very, very blessed to be working with them. Well, yeah, it's pretty special that we can go out, uh, you know, into the, into the forest a little bit and find amazing foods that, that you know, that, that taste great. Absolutely. Uh, but I should say it's important, like, to know what you're picking and stuff like that, right? Like, uh, it's not just, not, like, I wouldn't just go out and, oh, this is green, let's eat it, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, anything with foraging food, right, you want to get used to it. You want to take your time learn first and then take a little bit by little um, you can't go straight from eating all everything from the store 
to all of a sudden becoming um, a, a forager and eating anything from outside. So you got to get used to it. Once you get used to it, you can definitely adapt to the flavors a little bit more. Yeah, right. That, ma that makes absolute sense. And then you know what you're eating too, right? Exactly. You're not picking the wrong mushroom or something yes, like that. Yes, especially mushrooms. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, so Castro, here we have... Uh, we got some of that kale. Like you can see, the lovely colors are really vibrant, right? Uh, we got the kale in there. I just put some toasted fennel seeds, just because I love the flavor, like that sort of anise flavor, right? Yeah. In they go. Uh, I got some rice wine vinegar here. Nice. So I want to add this at this point, because as you know, we want to break down the cabbage a little bit, so it's not so it gets a little bit softer, right? Mm -hmm. So then we'll just give this a nice toss. Do you mind? Uh, how do you feel about spice? You like? Oh, some meat? I love spice. Well, I love gonna, spice. Put a couple of those guys in there. You know, chop those and throw them in. The thing too about spices is it's not it's not always given too too much heat. You want the flavors of the spices. You know, with my cooking, what I always try to say to people is when you hear spices, it doesn't always have to be hot. Yeah, it doesn't what mean we you're want to be running for a glass of milk. Right? Exactly. What we want is that nice heat coming out, balancing in the back, but we want the flavor of the ingredients here, which is the cabbage here to show up in, in, it, in the product. Absolutely, yeah, you just want that little thing that tells you, hey, there's, uh, there's a bit of spice in there. Yeah, there's a little bit of kick in there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This guy's a real professional. Do you see what he's doing here? The station's nice and clean. <laughs> you should see the show sometimes when I'm doing it by myself. <laughs> it gets a bit crazy. Okay, so we need some salt in there. Do you mind giving yeah. that a couple good pinches of salt? And now that's been mixed together nicely. We can set that aside, and we'll just have a look at these Casama chips. So this is what I was talking about. I, f I found that they really, I mean, we got nice clean oil here, obviously, mm -hmm. right? And they're starting to get crispy. And one of the ways I can tell is when I'm running the spoon through, I can sort of feel that they're getting crunchy. Yeah, right? absolutely. Um, and so we just want to make sure that they're cooked all the way through. The other thing that I, that I use in the kitchen sometimes is when the bubbling starts to dissipate. That means most of the moisture has come out and they're, uh, they're getting nice and crunchy. So we're almost there. And I'm looking forward to trying this, Chef. I hope so. I hope it does you. I hope it does you proud here. I mean, uh, this is the first time I've done a chef's recipe for him, you know. <laughs> and you said uh, this is a dish you've done before. Yes, um, this is a dish that uh, we featured at um, Hungry Hearts. Uh, it was a competition we did recently, and we wanted to show the combination of, you know, our local ingredients and and the African and Caribbean flavor. Very cool. Chef, you mind me seasoning a little oh, bit? Please do. Yeah, you always got to season while they're hot, right? Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, we've got the first components of our dish ready to go here. We'll be back later in the show with Castro to pull together our Moroccan spice lingcod and cassava chips with fresh tartar and kale slaw. Okay, so that's on the go. It's back to our kitchen. We're working with Chef Castro on my version of his favorite dish. Moroccan spice lingcod with cassava chips and fresh tartar and a kale slaw. All right, I see you're hard at work, eh? Yeah, I'm just I'm getting over started. here taking a break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Castro is going to start working on our uh, on our tartar sauce here because as a true chef, he doesn't like just standing still and watching somebody else do the work. So uh, we're going to to do a nice brunoise, which he's doing here of our of our shallot. Uh, and we've just got some mayonnaise here. You know, you can use your regular old generic mayonnaise. Uh, and just add most of these ingredients together. So we've got some uh, preserved lemon there, capers, yeah, I made it tough yeah. for you. Capers, coriander, which we're gonna crush down a little bit. And then we'll just season that up nicely, finish it with some fresh parsley and away we go. There you go. All right, so while Castro's doing some chopping, I'm just gonna get our batter together for our fish and chips. A uh, little bit of flour, and then over here I've got tempura flour. So the, in the temp do you make tempura flour at the restaurant? Uh, we do sometimes. Um, a lot of times we just like to do a, like a nice spat, uh, spice batter. Okay, yeah. And we just use our soda water and some spices. Yeah. Um, and make it with that. And would you put the spices in the batter or in the fl in the dredging flour? And, uh, we'll put it in the batter and the dredging because we always believe Both. you just do a little bit by little. Right. Yeah. Once you have the flavors in there, it all finishes off nicely in the end. All right. Well, that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and put it all in the in the dredging flour here because what I kind of want to do, Castro, what I, my plan here. I guess was to um, was to make the the fish still white, so you didn't really see the uh, the, the sort of African or yeah. the Moroccan type flavors. Um, but then when you take that bite, you go, oh wow, like a punch of flavor there. Nice. So I just added um, 
some allspice, mm -hmm. some cumin, some fresh or some ground coriander, uh, some cayenne pepper for a little bit of heat, and uh, oh, it's a touch of cinnamon, right? So we got some sweet and spicy flavors in there. Nice. Should be really yummy. Doing a great job there, pal. Appreciate that. Now, making our tempura batter, really important that we use fresh soda water. And we just want to whisk it together. Cold, and then the bubbles help to make a really nice, crispy, light batter. Is and they okay don't have to be too, yeah, they don't have to be too fine. Like, okay, you, you, just like, a nice little crunch with it. Yeah, yeah. I just want to be able to sort of, you know, it, when when you get a bite of it, you'll be like, oh wow, what's that? And you, pops then, in your mouth. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So Castro, House of Botang Catering, and a cafe as well. Yes, you've got a lot yes. going on, bud. You know, we, we, um, we've always wanted to, to have a business where we could, we're not bored. And with yeah. the catering, we're allowed to be able to do private dinners, private functions. Um, even in our space now, we can do a lot of events there. Okay. And then the cafe, it gives a chance uh, for us to be very, very creative and, and get people to come in our home. Um, <laughs> we've been very spending nice. a lot of time going to other places. We love people coming also into our home. Yeah. So that's where the cafe comes in part. Oh, I love it. That sounds great. Well, you're so personable, and I mean, you have a lovely family, and you know how do you, how you find that balance in the in the work family life can be challenging, can't it? <laughs> it definitely can. Tell me a little bit about uh, how much you do for the community. I know you're you're always out there. We talked a little bit about the arm, uh, our place thing already, but. Uh yeah, tell me a little bit more about that. Well, you know, Garrett, I've been very, very fortunate in my career. Um, with all the people that have supported me, um, it's only fair for me to give back. And for us, if, if there's a, a charity event that we can get involved in and we see the, the end product where it's helping people, we're always happy to be a part of it. And it, it's really satisfying. Yeah. You know, what it comes down to is really satisfying knowing that somebody gave gave their time for me and now I get to do the same for someone else. Yeah, it's, a, it's such a good feeling, isn't it? And, and for us, it's so easy to do. And not only do we get the end game side of things, but we also get to see the, uh, uh, we get to see the people's faces as they show up at our table and they go, oh, wow, that dish was amazing. Like, you know, uh, that's what I love about it, the instant gratification, I suppose. Yes, yes. All right, so I'm tempura shaking. batter made. Nice. It's a fairly thick batter, but I definitely want it to be coated, right? Yeah. I've dredged it in the seasoned flour here. And I'm using lingcod. I know, uh, you know, halibut is a favorite, and I definitely enjoy halibut. Um, but lingcod, I think, has it just holds up to the heat a little bit better. It does, you know, unless a lot of people overcook halibut, and then it ends up dry, right? So. Well, we're very fortunate with, with what we're getting out here. The products we're getting out here, and I mean, taking lingcod and substituting it for halibut, you're not going. You're <laughs> yeah. not going wrong at all, right? You know, yeah. it's sometimes the season doesn't allow us to have the halibut. And if the link card is, is available, that's the nice thing about being a chef too. You know when to, to switch it and get that's something right. else. Yeah, yeah and it's uh, not only is it in the name of uh, you know good quality product, but also in conservation, right? Absolutely. So uh, yes. you know we're protecting the species from overfishing and so on by having these seasons. So using it when they're in season is kind of ideal. Okay, so using a fork here, mostly because I don't want to get my hands dirty, <laughs> but uh, we're going to dip it into our fryer oil here. There there here we go. go. It's sizzling away. Yeah. Turn my heat up just a little bit, and then just let it drop right in there. There we go. So obviously, uh, Castro, if anybody's doing this at home, they want to make sure they use a deep enough pot, right, so it doesn't come up and over and boil over the pan. Yes, yes, and also when you're dropping it in, as, as Chef is doing, you know, he's putting it away from him, right, so it's not splashing right back to That's him. it, yeah, so the batter doesn't splash back at you. When I worked at a, uh, at a seafood restaurant, they had sushi chefs in there, and they used to take all these uh, bits and pieces here, and they'd sprinkle it over the top like that. Oh, nice. And then they'd make sushi rolls with all those crispy bits. Yeah, Not it was, it was delicious. Idea. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Chef <laughs> snacks. Yeah, that's exactly what it was, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Okay, so how did our tartar sauce come along there? Yeah, I'm just about to mix it. Um, I got the preserved lemons in, I got the herbs in, I got the capers. Awesome. And I add a touch a bit of uh, seasoning. Very nice and also the fennel seeds. Good, should we give it a little taste? Yes, absolutely. Right. One for you. Thank you. One for me. See, the coriander, mm -hmm. although it gives it a bit of a crunch, so it's like not that really smooth tartar sauce, mm -hmm. but it does give it a little, 
That's interesting. What's yeah. that? Like that floral note of coriander, right? Yeah, and that's what's nice about food. You want people to have that. I, I taste something, but what is it? What mm -hmm. is it? And it's second guessing, right? That's why they come to your restaurant as opposed to going to a different someone else's restaurant. That's right. Have them guessing what it is and, and wanting to know more about it, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. So, uh, Caribbean cuisine, African cuisine. Tell me how you. Uh, tell me how you. You know, what that means to you and how it comes about. Well, you know, as a as a young man, the one thing I remember is how long it took for my 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 parents to make dinner, and it was always. I always used to be thinking, well, why are you starting so early? And it was to get it, to get it to flavor. You know, my mom would get up early in the morning, make her marinade and flavor it for a very long time. And what that does is it's, you take a, a, an inexpensive cut of meat and you marinate it and it breaks it down and you get this beautiful meat. You know, I tell my mom I cook tenderloin. She's like, why? <laughs> why would you ever <laughs> be using that? <laughs> why would you be using tenderloin, right? So we... Um, we do a lot of a lot of food where it's been marinated with flavors, and people always first think it's spices. Spice is not really what we're going for. We want a lot of spices, but we don't want heat. Right. So we take coriander, we take cinnamon, we take nutmeg. Believe it or not, vanilla is a spice in my mind. You oh, know, right. it's yeah, a yeah. sweet, sweet spice there. But you can use that in, in any kind of application. Yeah, not just for dessert, right? Not you could just definitely for use that in some uh, in some savory applications. Oh, I, I love uh, I love vanilla with um, uh, vanilla curry and, and a fish. That's, that's me. Oh, delicious. I love stuff yeah, yeah. like that. That does sound good. All right, Castro, so our fish is really coming along. A few more, well, maybe about 30 more seconds, and I'll take it out and put it on a little blotting cloth there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm really curious. You, you said you came from West Africa, from mm -hmm. Ghana. Uh, what kind of foods did you eat growing up? Uh, we ate lots of, um, lots of stews, uh, lots of food that's been marinated for a very, very long time, and that's kind of the base of our cooking right now. We want to marinate something yeah. and then um, allow the flavors to penetrate. Uh, we use a lot of spices, but not necessary heat. What right. we want is the flavor of the base, you know, okay. flavor of the ingredients, um, and we want you to be able to taste the item. Yeah, and so, uh, but things like, you know, would you use, um, you know, would you use beef tenderloin? No, nah, no. Nah. No? <laughs> uh, growing up, I never had a beef teller until I started working in professional kitchens. You know, we've always had, um, you know, meat cuts of meat that's, uh, that takes a very long time to braise. Uh, yeah. Those are the meats that you can marinate, break it down, and then cook it for all day. Right. And you get the same, the same flavors or the same texture as, as a tenderloin. And so, and when you were you a kid, when you were a kid, let's say, uh, <laughs> did, was mom after you like, Castro, clean your plate, finish all your food, or, or were you a good eater? You know, it took me a while. Yeah. It definitely took me a while to, to really get into my food, but you know, in my household, nothing was left. You have to eat it all because you just have no idea when the next meal is going to be around. Yeah, fair so enough. So we always encourage, and to this day, we try to do the same thing with the kids. You know, constantly encourage them to have everything, finish everything before they move to the next. Yeah, and, so. and to try everything, right? That's it at my house. Uh, yeah. you, may, you may not like it this time, but you're going to try it anyway. So. Yeah. All right, so our slaw uh, has had a chance to sit. Nice, it's looking beautiful. Hmm. Have a little taste. Really looking forward to trying this. Chefs always eating with their hands, right? <laughs> it's true, yeah. <laughs> it's true. All right, so for presentation, now this probably won't look quite the same as uh, when you're doing it for your competitions or stuff like that, but. By the way, Castro's beat me in several competitions uh, over the years here, but he's a good guy, so I don't mind losing to him. Uh, okay, so we got a bit of the coleslaw down in the middle there. Mm -hmm. uh, let's grab a spoon here as we compose this and put some of the tartar sauce. Let's just kind of go around the plate like nice, this. Nice, nice. Very, uh, very avant-garde, hey? Mm -hmm. Oak cuisine. Nice piece of the fish. Looking so crispy. It does look crispy, hey? You can. Yeah. Can you hear? That? And that's 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 fish and <laughs> chips. <laughs> exactly. It's just as much about the crunch, isn't it? Absolutely. And then we've got these awesome cassava chips that I'm so glad you introduced me to. And you think I could get them to stand up on there though? There we go. There you go. We need the long tweezers, eh? <laughs> <laughs> this is funny because you see this all the time. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and there you have it. Moroccan spiced link cod with cassava chips. Fresh coil kale slaw and that lovely tartar sauce all the way around there. Should we give it a try? Absolutely. All let's right. get in here. Yeah, let's give it a whirl. Oh, good on you. Get into oh, that. Look at that. It's that crunch. I know. That's what you're looking for. That's what you look. Very nice. Get some of the tartar sauce. Thanks, by the way, for building that. I really appreciate your help. Oh, you're welcome. Mm. Mm. 
All the viewers can hear is our crunching right now. It's perfect. <laughs> you got the preserved lemon, capers. Mm -hmm. All the flavors are coming to each, each with each bite. And you get some of those Moroccan spices on the mm -hmm. fish, don't you? That's a, just lovely. Thanks okay. so much, Castro. I really appreciate you being here. I'm going to order this the next time I come see you. <laughs> I'll, come, I'll, come, I'll come see you. I hope it's on the menu. I want to try your version. I'll see you. Now, what better way to enjoy this beautiful dish than with a choice beverage? With me today is Genevieve from Rathgen Cellars. How are you? Good, and you? Very good. Thank you for being on the show today. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Well, I'm really excited. I understand this is a new uh, winery here on Vancouver Island, and I'm excited to try it. So what have you brought for us today? I brought uh, Rathgen Cellars. This is our wine bunker series, so it's our entry-level wines. We okay. made it to be really food-friendly, so both the white and the red. Uh, the white will obviously accompany very easily fish and seafood and poultry, okay. but since you did a meal today with a lot of spices, like Asian spice, Moroccan spices, Indian flavors as well, they yeah. go really well with this kind of white wine. Nice, so it sounds pretty well-rounded. Uh, it's like body, got a lot of acidity, a little bit like a beer, so it's very refreshing and palate right, cleansing, yeah, yeah. so with the chips and the salt and the tartar sauce. Oh, it smells lovely, the nose is amazing. Yeah, we made it in the style of Alsatian wine, so you got mm -hmm, all these okay. pears and apple. Oh, that's lovely. Let's see how it uh, holds up to this. So the spice is all in the fish here, so yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll help each other out there. So take a little bite and see how that comes out. Mmm, <laughs> that's really good. Yeah, it matches well with the wine. I think you made a great choice here. Yeah, the white wine with the fish is really good. Really nice, and it holds up to the Moroccan spices. Great job. Absolutely. Thank you. Check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to savor the flavor. Mm -hmm. These mm. chips are so crunchy.